How to protect your biofield and your energy like a warrior. This is an individual reading for Vicky and a collective reading for you. If you are becoming an oracle, a guru, a Jedi, a Skywalker, and you are wanting to know the technology behind your shield, your sword, and how to empower yourself or cleanse yourself, this is the video for you. When we were in the water world, the bottom part of our biofield, when we were in the grasps of the gods of suffering, the age of Pisces, we were susceptible to many dangers, but we were shielded. And this shield kept us from being seen and detained, hurt. But now that we've stepped into the age of Aquarius, it is our duty and our job to know how to protect ourselves from the unseen world. A warrior chooses objects in the physical world to create a shield. Suffice it to say that when, when we were in Pisces, we were in the written word. We were memorizing, we were learning to talk, speak, and walk. We were learning to socialize. We were learning about gods and nature and the material world. But once we step into the right side up world, the number 13 or the 11th house of Aquarius, we are no longer children. And we move from the written word and the seen world to the unseen world. We begin to deliberately select and choose acts of power so that we can create new worlds. Shields can be acts of power like making a garden, making a labyrinth out of stones, connecting with trees or animals who become your spiritual ally, writing a book about forces that are in your favor and creating imaginary allies. In the book, Carlos Castaneda, A Separate Reality, on page 216, Carlos says, what are shields? And Don Juan says, what you do with your actions. Cleanliness is next to godliness. I'm putting my own words in there. <laughs> and godliness is power. So it's not just cleaning, though. It's creating things. It's imagining new things, great things. And Carlos says, well, what do people do that makes their shield? And he says, well, look around. People are busy doing that which people do. Those are their shields. Whenever a sorcerer has an encounter with any of those inexplicable and unbending forces that we have talked about, your gap opens, making you susceptible to your death than he ordinarily is. Through that gap, therefore, if it is open, one should have his will ready to fill it. That is, if one is a warrior. If you are not a warrior, then one has no other recourse but to use the activities of daily life to take one's mind away from the fright of the encounter and thus to allow one's gap to close. The act of being angry or cold or jealous or judgmental is an act of protecting your gap that has no shield to protect it. So it is about learning to use our will to protect ourselves from other people's will, from their version of the world or reality. Many people imagine a terrible world where they are victims. And when you get around those people, they bring their world into your gap or your opening or your biofield, and then you suffer with them. And we don't want to suffer with the world. We want to be a warrior who hunts for knowledge like you are in a battle or you are in a war. Now, let's talk about the symbols within Vicky's piece because Vicky has opened up a gap in her biofield and energies have entered into it and these energies are not in her favor. And more than not in her favor, there's an energy who is wanting to take 
Vicky's third ring of power and give it to the god Yam. The god Yam is the god of the waters of chaos, war, and child sacrifice. This puts you in a box underwater. And this puts you in a place where you are in District 12. You are under the energy of someone else's will, not your will and not the will of God. The Egyptian sphinx or lion at the six o'clock position represents Egypt. When we are in Egypt, we are in the matrix and we are in the box. We are out of alignment or balance with the elements, which is why there's an elephant over there at seven o'clock. We move from a little box to a big box. This means that our biofield begins to strengthen, our knowledge begins to strengthen, and we begin to go into an alignment or balance with the will of the natural flow of the universe. Vicky has a big pink heart over her chest, and inside this heart is Dagon the fish god, someone from the spirit world, influences from the unseen world, maybe um, a ghost or something paranormal. And then a woman who works for Hera, the wife of Zeus. They cut out their tongues and they work for Zeus. Now Zeus is like the I am and Zeus is electricity and Zeus is all about the Greek gods having child sacrifices. And if you haven't watched the movie Chaos, I encourage that because this woman wearing this particular outfit was in the movie or the Netflix show Chaos and she's taking a golden child or a baby that was in the heart chakra of Vicky and Dagon has taken her crown. So we're going to look deeper into these symbols and talk about how you can shield yourself from principalities and powers that are connected to human beings unbeknownst to you. How can your baby, your child, your crown be taken from you? People, beliefs, forming groups, churches, and unions with other humans without protecting yourself with the shield of your power and your will. If we have not become a sorcerer or a warrior that has perfected their acts of power around people, then the unseen world easily manipulates us, easily gets us to surrender through pity, guilt, chaos, gossip, things like that. And like a thief in the night, they take something from you. And I had a dream last night about these people were doing drugs and when they were doing the drugs they were feeling such bliss like being in the womb of a mother and they felt like that that feeling would make them powerful and keep them from danger but it was the opposite i saw that it burned their soul like it it fried their soul like it it dried them out and then they went underwater and then nothing was in their favor and the people that were nice to them suddenly were laughing at them that they had so easily taken advantage of them and pushed them down into a place of weakness and suffering. Now, I don't want us to be paranoid. I don't want us to be afraid of people. I don't want us to finger point and say, that person is possessed by a demon who's out to take my crown or my, sh or my, my child or my third ring of power. I don't want us to do that. I want us to always operate from a foundation of power. Nothing is against you because you have designed it in such a way that you have protected yourself through daily meditation, transmuting, and staying in your zero point energy, which is the divine will of God or the divine will of your higher self. If we go out of the will of our higher self and the divine order, that's when we get trapped by people who know that you are not in divine order of God. Because if you're in their world and they're not doing the will of God, then they see you as also not doing the will of God. And maybe they don't see it from a human perspective, but there's something about them that stands as witness near them, 
which is a principality or power watching through their eyes. So when we look at the three o'clock position, these are two rings of power. There's a Roman trying to pull a white bull down into Egypt, which is the matrix. And there's a Jesus on the cross above it. But notice the rainbow that forms above the Jesus. That is Vicky's third ring of power. That is a baby. Remember, Mary, Joseph, Jesus is the third ring of power. Osiris, Isis, Horus is the third ring of power. It is... It is an energy that you grow to like an embryo, but many people get to a certain precipice and the ring gets stolen out of ignorance. We so easily fall, it seems. It seems like a very fragile thing, almost like a leaf trying to make it out of a fire. And we need to really dig and find answers about how to truly strengthen ourselves and strengthen and but mo more importantly protect ourselves from these principalities and powers who need your third ring of power in order to live forever now i don't know everything but i know that your third ring of power is scientific in the sense that it represents electrons and electrons live forever so there's something that is fed upon us like a thief in the night and we have to be careful According to Vicky's reading, at 11 o'clock, there's an angel who is holding the eye of the needle. She says, the way for you to not be torn to shreds, to be fed upon, to be t detained, to be seen, to have your crown and your third ring of power stolen, you must be in the eye of the needle. The eye of the needle is the will of God. The eye of the needle is, is many things, but Sometimes the will of God is cleaning your diet, cleaning what you eat and drink, cleaning your relationships. Sometimes the eye of the needle is learning to use controlled folly in front of those that you know do not do the will of God. And this means that you say in your mind, I, I am not me. May my higher self take over and handle this person who is in front of me and you Go through a deathless death within inside of yourself and you get rid of your ego, you get rid of your personality, you get rid of everything that you are and you allow something that was created by you, like a warrior, an ally, maybe a fairy, a really strong fairy that you imagine and you allow them to take over and handle and shield you from your predators. The angel is holding two candles and her wings make a heart that's been torn. This is someone whose energy was torn and whose heart was torn and who was polarized out of ignorance. Many angels fell because we didn't know that we weren't supposed to give our power and our energy away. We thought that the will of God was to help people from suffering. But I did a reading once where a goddess who was riding a chariot felt really sorry for this girl who was in the world of the damned. And she reached over a dam to pick her up and to help her. And instead of helping the girl, the girl pulled this goddess down into the world of the damned and the water. And she had to live an entire life learning the technology of not feeling sorry for people. So I'm not saying that you should help it, that, that we should be ruthless and not help anyone. I'm saying that we should only help in divine order. Many of us help other people out of low self-worth because we're trying to prove to God and the world that we're good. We're trying to prove that we care. And it is not about whether we care or not. It's about whether it is in the eye of the needle, which is divine timing. So just be aware that we have shifted into a world or a reality of power. And we were protected from that power when we were in the clock, in the number 12. But we have invisibly shifted into 13. It is invisible. 12 is visible, 13 is invisible. And there are rules here and there are truths here, like going to Hogwarts. 
There are dementors. There are things around you that affect or even infect your biofield or your, your energetic body. The star that is by your right ear that is right next to the eye of the needle is a portal. And this is that you bounce your consciousness up and listen for messages from higher realms. It's no longer in our favor to look down and to seek information from the world of the dead, the spiritually dead. Their only purpose is to see your great light and pull you down into their world with them and they feed on you. It is the battle of Ragnarok in the sense that it is the wolves or the dogs who eat apples versus the vampires, the immortal ones. Apparently, when we are in the eye of the needle, when we have three rings of power, we can take what is evil and turn it into good. We can create new worlds and realities. Like Bastion, who gave himself a new name, became born again, awoken to his double, was able to go to the ivory tower and create a new world where everything comes back to life that was stolen like Artex who fell in the swamp of sadness. We take that grain of sand, of golden sand, and we imagine a new world and we seek first that world. Your second piece is your third ring of power is protected under a dome. Your face and the face of your double or your twin is inside the shield or the heart. And your cows, the white cows that are often sacrificed by the gods, the gods choose pure white cows, the minotaurs, who they put in a labyrinth and they sacrifice seven boys and seven girls in something called the Pantheon Games. And it is like the Olympic Games. And it's funny that the Olympic Games have circles of power, which they have five rings of power and we only have two. So they are the gods who take rings of power in these games that they call hunger games. But you're connected to the Lemurians and you have an ancient energy. You have your crown back. You have spirit, a spirit guide that is Lemurian, like an elf. And you have your golden child back and you have your energy back through the act and the art of the looking glass or scrying. Apparently, we can change things through this portal. And if you do not scry, then you should. So let's say that you're scrying and you see a jerk and some jerk people on your biofield or energy. You'll want to change it into good. And then once you see it and you change it into good, of course, your actions, thoughts, words, what you eat and what you do and who you inter interact with and how you hunt for power will strengthen that shield in your daily life. You will know if you are in the eye of the needle, if you are in your balance, if everything is in your favor, if you feel good, if you feel joy, if your inner child has the ability to get out and play and feel magical, you will know that you are in the eye of the needle. But Vicki, you are here to become a fairy godmother. You are here to take Cinderella's who are trapped in the house of someone else's jerk energy like the evil stepmother and the evil stepsisters and like a thief in the night you will enter into the room or the hall of someone who has grown their house like your first piece and are ready to balance a left and meet the real true god of mercy power understanding joy and balance and this is a left ale the elephant and you will go and see these Cinderella's in divine timing and use your wand and give her her gown, her crown, and her freedom from ignorance, really. Once we step into the mansion, we have expanded, expansion mansion, into a strengthening of our spiritual embryo. We will learn to feed our spirit and do the will of God in divine timing. And this does include helping people. But we are not helping people out of divine timing. That is something that comes from a foundation of uh, guilt, low self-worth, or even self-importance. When we mirror your second piece, we see a chalice. And out of the chalice comes a bull. And so the bottom part is a ring. The, the middle part is a ring. And the top part is a ring. 
the mirrored version of your piece is the more proper version because we live in a world of duality. It's your third eye that takes the two pieces and puts them into unification. This is your holy grail. This is your eternal life. This is that you are ready to drink from the waters of truth and life and to perfect that. And then your first piece here reflects two houses and a circle in the middle of the two houses. And this reflects a very lower world with the two squares at the bottom. The two squares is two dice. What does two dice sound like? To die. This is death. Then we grow out of death to a larger house. And then we grow out of there through the heart chakra where the top part of the heart makes the letter M, Emerald City. The bottom part of the heart makes the letter V. And this is 1111. The two houses make 1111. The letter V is the 22nd letter in the alphabet. So when you're rocking the royal road of 22, you're here to grow and strengthen your biofield, your spirit. And then by extension, you're here to use your shield as a protection by maintaining zero point energy in the middle of the two houses it, where you strengthen your double, your born again self in such a degree that nothing is against you and everything is in your favor. Suffice it to say, it's never a good idea to enter into the halls of other people's energy out of divine timing. If you have to go to Walmart, if you have to go out in public, or if you have a job, then you're going to want to wear clothing and wear things that reflect life energy. Rose essential oil has over 320 hertz. Linen clothing emits 5,000 hertz frequency, and you'll wear talismans of protection. You will be very kind to people. You will shine your light so brightly that you will attract good people and the dark ones can't see you or detain you and they won't attack you because your light is so bright. So how we handle humans and this world is we become like a child. We are so joyful. We are so happy. We are so loving. We are so light that we attract those people in our lives. And then the jerks are like, I don't know if I want to mess with you. You're too happy. You're too light. You will destroy my darkness. And that's how it goes. It's really simple. But at the same time, let's say that you enter into some kind of group. And then like I, I, got, I was part of a drum circle once. I love those people. We had such fun. I love them. On the dream world, they attacked me. Now, now people won't purposely attack you. It's something attached to them. That attacks you. And my husband saw this and he eats them. And then when he eats people who try to attack me, locusts fly out of his mouth, like on the dream world. So you have allies and these allies will help you. But you, but the purpose of this reality is to help yourself. The reason Jesus laid down his life for you is he gave you his third ring of power. That's why he always represented the number three, three crosses. He died at 33. The sun rose at three o'clock after he died. Jesus, Mary, Joseph is three, the three wise men. And he made this matrix of false reality so that we can strengthen ourselves so that when we do enter into the realm of power, we won't be devoured instantly. This is a growing place, a place of growing. And we have to practice our shield and our sword at this time. And also notice how this piece makes a lotus flower at the top, which is the symbol of Isis for you. And this um, is three. It's the three-faced goddess, Hecate. And this is a beautiful place for you to be. Um, we're just learning to strengthen things that we didn't even know existed when we were in the lower world. And so don't have deep, serious conversations with people that you know are still in the dog they will bring you into their religions. They will bring you into their belief. And their belief is um, a contract that they have made or a promise that they have made. And these promises, um, when we enter into Emerald City, the, the promises that we made in the lower world have to be resolved. So let's say when you're, when you're um, in your youth, you made a promise because... 
let's say that you made fun of somebody and and you, when you're young you don't know any better and this person that you made fun of ended up doing something to themselves where they where they no longer exist right and you felt so bad about using your power over this weak person that you made an inner promise to never be powerful because you don't want to hurt anyone anymore and it traumatized you in some way. Well, your entire life, you will stick to that promise until one day you will have a sign that that promise has been healed. And then you can let go of that promise and then step into the realm of true power, not the power to bully someone, but the power to do the will of God and that you are just a vessel to do that will of God. And you do not have pity. You do not have um, guilt. You do not have any of those low-based feelings. You aren't polarized by me versus you or right versus wrong. You are simply in the eye of the needle doing the will of God. And it is not your will, but the will of your higher self, which is a fractal and a mirror of the one infinite source, which is a laugh, apparently. <laughs> Enjoy this meditation, Vicky. This is a meditation to build, build up your shield and your sword and to become a warrior for your temple. Your temple is the temple of God. And believe me, this God wants your temple to be fierce and powerful and strong. This is a meditation to strengthen your ethereal net before going out in public. I suggest that you stand up so you can dance, but you can sit and imagine your ethereal net like guitar strings, and you are plucking the strings, activating your physical body, your invisible body, and your magic. Suddenly, Colors begin to envelop your biofield. Stars, sprinkles of magic enter into your biofield. And then here comes the base. This is the power of your heart waking up and igniting your shield and your sword. Not through anger, not through blame, not through being polarized, but through the eye of the needle. Get your heels on the floor and activate your feet, your fingers, and begin to focus above your head, your halo and your crown, lighting up and coming alive. Send joy and love to every part of your cells, your veins, your blood, the water in your body, the tips of your eyelashes. Activate. Move around in a spinning spiral to gather power and magnetism. And you say, I am joy, I am life, I am nothing and yet everything. My holy temple is yours, God of wisdom, God of life. Not my will, but your will. I strengthen my energy. For you to create new worlds and to take what is evil and turn it into good. If there is a design against you, if there is a principality or power who has a will that is against the will of God, you now have the power to take their will and turn it into good. Come along.
the sound of your peace. 